Kevin, as you look at the Northwestern game and you can, you know, just isolate on that, or you can look throughout the entire season, uh, because you made the comment out of the gate. You didn't think Clemson's as good as they were last year, neither Ohio state. So for me with the Buckeyes, it's, you lost two of the top three players to the NFL draft. So these guys are all replaced with four and five stars. So from a talent perspective, roughly the same, but obviously that's just an evaluation. Chase Young is a difference maker. Jeffrey Okuda, difference maker, elite at their positions, arguably the best cover corner. I don't think arguably, just flat out the best pass rusher, disruptor in the nation, gone. J.K. Dobbins, for as good as Trey Sermon was last week, gone. Don't think that he's been replaced. To me, that's those three guys are the difference. Well, and throw in, uh, of course, Jordan Fuller as well. Damon Arnett. As right. well. <laughs> yeah, and and the, you know, and I think Ohio State's been getting good production from its interior defensive line, but they certainly lost a lot last year there. But you know, looking at Clemson right now, Travis Etienne hasn't been Travis Etienne this year. Um, he's had some good games and he's had some you know relatively pedestrian games, but a pedestrian Travis Etienne is is a pretty good back. I mean, but you know, I don't think that they are significantly as explosive as they were in years past. Amari Rogers at receiver, tremendous talent. Uh, uh, Powell, uh, the, he's been stepping up as of late. I think he's been putting up some big numbers. But I think that those two teams last year were, I don't want to say significantly better, but I think they were, I think from 1 to 22, I think they were better teams. But I think part of it, too, is, just the whole cloud of this season. And I, I don't, I hate keep harping on six games for Ohio State. And there certainly was a level of uncertainty for Clemson. And and their wheels got shot off midway when they had their, their COVID tests with Trevor Lawrence and some defensive players or whatnot. So when you're not going through, when you don't wake up each week and go, okay, this is who we're definitely playing on Saturday, which we've done for every year prior in terms of college football. And this year, it's just a gigantic crapshoot. You don't have – you. It's, it's hard to build from week to week. And I think that's why this year is just so different than any other year because you just don't know what you're going to be doing at any given week. And now we're sitting here in the situation where we've already had the college football playoff committee. We've already had Bill Hancock come out and said, if a team or both teams are sick, we're going to hold the game and still play it down the line. We're, you know, we're all, I mean, we're in that final stretch. We're going to have these games. So, you know, we, we saw the Gasparilla Bowl go away when South Carolina was sick. We saw Tennessee get bounced out of its game when it got sick. Nothing is for certain right now. So I, it just creates so much uncertainty. And I think that's why it's been hard for teams to really grow from week to week. Steve? Steve, any yeah, any thoughts on that? Uh, Go ahead, I'll talk to you. Well, yeah, I'm 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 with Kevin on this. The the Ohio State losing Damon Arnett, Jeff Okuda, Jordan Fuller, Chase Young, those are four guys who were starting in the NFL before injuries took some of them. And that's the the bulk of Ohio State's pass defense. And I include Chase Young in that because he's the start of their pass defense. And so you replace all of those and, and there's a, a significant drop off in the secondary for Ohio State and the problem that Ohio State is facing is they haven't gotten to fix it ne necessarily in game action they've played a couple of ad average quarterbacks and that's also a problem within the Big Ten they don't get to see great quarterbacks they get to see one every day in practice but it's not the same as as game action because you know what you're doing you know the guy you're going against and uh, so Seven Banks, the opposite corner of Sean Wade, has had his up, ups and downs, but hasn't been able to you know, become what everybody expected because, it's as Kevin said, it's hard for everybody to do that. Marcus Williamson in the slot has not replaced Sean Wade. He's had his issues. Marcus Hooker out um, deep has not replaced Jordan Fuller, and he's had his issues. And and as they were starting to make some moves, then they, they start to lose uh, – the weeks that they can't play games and games get canceled. And so you can't implement the changes that you want. And then when you start to want to implement some stuff, then Josh Proctor is out. And then Josh Proctor comes back and Marcus Hooker is out. And it's really just, who do we have this week? Let's try to play with those guys. It's hard to game plan 
two, three, four weeks into the future because you don't know who you're going to have and you only have the guys around you. And it's hard to get better as a team when the team changes every single week. Now, guys can get better, but it's hard to, as, as a team, continue to like put everything together and gel. And it's like the offensive line. The more, guy, more games those guys play together, the better they get, they gel. Team needs to gel too, and it's been impossible for Ohio State, and it's been all, probably uh, almost impossible for everybody else this year. Yeah, I I think Ohio State, uh, the six games they played uh, was was very good. Um, you know, was it top four good? I don't know. I think their game control, or however that number that that they like to reference now and then, was pretty good. It wasn't very good this past week. They trailed for over thirty minutes of clock time. Uh, in the Northwestern game, uh, they they were head three to nothing, then trailed seven to three midway through the first quarter. Didn't regain the lead until two minutes to go in the third quarter. So it was just over thirty minutes that they trailed in this game. And uh, otherwise, though, uh, for the season, uh, they were either tied or trailed only about forty or fifty minutes out of the previous uh, five games, which would be three hundred minutes. So. Uh, and really big halftime leads. I mean, they had great starts against Nebraska, Penn State, Rutgers, uh, Indiana, and obviously Michigan State. They allowed Penn State, Rutgers, and Indiana to come back on them in the second half, but they never gave up the lead in any of those games. They just made some mistakes, put some younger guys in the game, maybe weren't as aggressive offensively or defensively as they had been in the first half in building the lead. And with short roster or, you know, guys missing or whatever, maybe it just worked out that way. Or, again, trying to play some younger guys when you have a, a big lead and some mistakes crept in there. So, you know, they were they were thoroughly dominant in the six games that they played. Did they play a lot of great teams? No, not really. I mean, Penn State, four and five, they turned out. Um uh, Indiana, obviously, uh, just a terrible situation with them. How the AP and the coaches have them around seven or eight, and the committee puts them in at eleven and doesn't put them in a, a New Year's Six game uh, is just mind-numbing to me. Um, I just I don't understand that. Uh, Michigan State wasn't very good, so. Uh, you know, Northwestern at one point was ranked as high as number eight before they lost to Michigan State and, um, you know, had a decent, had a great comeback year for them. I mean, they were three and nine last year. They actually looked like a, a, a real football team this year and really kind of drilling down on that game. Um, I think the one thing that's given a lot of people pause about Ohio State is Justin Fields. He did not play well at all against Northwestern. 